we'll be looking at string algorithms. I will be taking uh, rab and car hashing. Rupesh should be taking uh, suffix arrays, suffix trees, aho parasic trick, and uh, Prashant will be taking KFP. So, uh, anyways, how many of you have done string matching problems? String matching, any sort of <coughs> string matching problem? KMP, you've done KMP. Okay. So, we'll start off with the most uh, common problem in string matching. The most common problem is something called uh, needle in the haystack. Needle in the haystack. So, basically, this problem goes like you're given a large <laughs> string, like uh, we call it H, haystack. The large string is the haystack, and you have to find a small, whether a small substring exists or not. That thing is called the needle. So you should find if n exists in H. So some of you might have heard of built-in functions for this. Can you name them? Substring, str, str in C. So C does this with uh, str, str. I believe C++ has uh, find, string dot find, find, string find, colon find or string colon search, whatever. But what are the pitfalls of str, str in string search, string find? No, oh, we, let's say we don't want the exact location for now. We just want to know if it exists in the string or not. If you have more than, uh, if you have queries, then it take more. No, okay, can you tell me in terms of complexity, what do you think str, str complexity is? Let's say uh, h, h size is n, uh, okay, the, the haystack size is n and the uh, needle size is n. n. So str, str, uh, though c does not give a documentation for it, they don't mention the complexity, it is believed to be O of n, str, str. Nobody actually knows what algorithm they are using for string matching. So there are there's about half a dozen algorithms which can do this in linear time. So you can find the needle in the haystack in O of n plus m. In general, some of them will be like O of n with a O of m pre O of n pre compute. Sometimes O of m plus n pre compute. Whatever, but they'll be linear. So there are roughly half a dozen famous algorithms from this off the top of my head. KMP, Rab and Car, Z algorithm, <coughs> which we'll be showing today. So anyway, we'll start off with uh, Rab and Car. So of the six, half dozen string algorithms you have here, Disclaimer, this is the worst of the lot. In most cases, KMP is all, in most, no, in every case, KMP is always better than Rabin Car because Rabin Car has a worst case of O of NM. Worst case. But what makes Rabin Car special? So, Rabin Car makes use of a string hashing called. Uh, Rabin Karp's rolling hash, or in, in general, it's called rolling hash. This string hashing technique can be used to formulate a variety of other algorithms and can be solved and can solve some other problems. Like for example, in Chennai ICPC, we, ha we were given a problem using Aho Korasik, but none of us knew Aho Korasik. So somehow we just modify this and derive a solution in m root in time, which is good enough for that problem. So anyway. Let's start off with this. Okay. Uh, some prerequisites. We'll need. All of you are familiar with uh, prefix sums, I hope, because you'll know. Bit. Anyone need a refresher on prefix sums? Prefix sums, anyone? No? Okay. Modulo arithmetic. Anyone? I'll just give this for now. So, modular arithmetic is basically we want to calculate modular oper uh, operations like addition, subtraction, uh, division 
and the answer should be percentage some mod. Okay, so if we have a plus b whole mod whole mod m, it is equal to a mod m plus b mod m the whole mod m. Yeah, you, you will know this. If you have a minus b, it is a mod m minus b mod m. We will put here yeah, plus m like someone said, whole mod m. And similarly, a into b will be the same as addition. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. So for division, a by b, the whole mod m, you have to calculate something known as an inverse mod. So it is equal to a into b power minus 1 mod m. This is an inverse mod, I'm just using this to represent it. So this part you know, the multiplication. How will you calculate this? Extended order. Huh? Extended order. Extended order, okay. But there's a simpler formula. If m is prime, <coughs> it is just b power m minus 2. If m is prime, if and only if m is prime. This is true because uh, Euler's, <coughs> oh, sorry, Fermat's theorem. Fermat's theorem. You have in Fermat's theorem, you have a power m minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod m. Correct. This is Fermat's theorem. So if you reduce it down to this, you get a power minus one. Same thing. Okay. Just an extra bit. If m is not uh, prime, you'll have this Euler's theorem, which is uh, uh, Euler's theorem is uh, a power torsion function of a m. Minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod m. If this is this is if uh, m is not prime. A torsion, a power torsion function is congruent to 1. Minus 1 is a minus. Oh, yes, yes. Correct, correct. correct. Uh, yeah. So this was this can be used to derive from as theorem. So if m is prime, torsion function of m, is, if m is prime is equal to m minus 1. Torsion function of M is the number of elements which are co-prime, which are lesser than M and co-prime to M. 